Hi kids, welcome to another day where we take skills that we learned in single variable calculus and translate them into three dimensional. So before we did derivatives in the video previous to, the, previous to this, and now we're gonna do antiderivatives and we're gonna start with definite integrals, right? So if I have a vector valued function r and I want you to start anti-differentiating it a and stop at time b in component form that is just literally taking the antiderivative of each separate component horizontal vertical up and down right or x y and z and of course i can write it in the linear combination form of i and j and k so given this one here i do i am literally just going to anti-differentiate sine from zero to one. I'm going to anti-differentiate six from zero to one. And I'm going to anti-differentiate four T from zero to one. Of course, I have to remember the fun I have to remember what my anti-derivative rules are. So I have negative cosine from zero to one. I have six T from zero to one. And I have T squared over two, so two T squared from zero to one. So this is negative cosine one minus cosine of zero, minus cosine of zero, which is one negated. Then I have a six minus zero, and then I have two minus zero. So I can put this in component form, right? That's positive one minus cosine of one six and two, right? So it's just the mechanics, right? Just the mechanics of give me a vector value function, how do I do a definite integral? Now, what if we do an indefinite integral? So if you remember from Calc 1, what was the big deal with indefinite integrals? What did you, what would you lose a point for if you forgot? plus c, right, where that was a constant. Well, notice my plus c now. It's a vector. It's a vector, so be very careful. So notice there are no limits of integration here. I just want the general indefinite uh, integral or the general antiderivative. I still am just doing it piece by piece, anti-differentiate f, g, and t, or in the x, y, z direction or I can put it in i, j, and k, linear combination form. i and j, antiderivative in the i direction, and anti in the j, and anti in the k, but don't forget that I am adding that vector c, and that c is a vector, right? And a vector has an i, j, and k component, right? Or an x, y, z component. So what if I wanted the indefinite integral for that same example that we just had before, right? The previous example, instead of going from zero to one, what if I wanted the indefinite integral? Well, the indefinite integral would be negative cosine t, six t, and two t squared, all plus the vector c. Or you could write it like this, negative cosine t i and 6 t j and 2 t squared k and vector c. Now, if I know what vector c is, and I have its i, j, and k components, I would then just combine it. I would combine the i components, j components, because this is, after all, the addition of two vectors, right? So we just combine like components. Okay, again, just mechanics. Now, what about integrals and initial value problems? Do you remember that from single variable calculus? right? If I give you r of 1, or I'm sorry, I ask you to find r of 1. If I give you r prime, is this rule. 
and I give you an initial condition. So I want you to find R, find R, with the conditional initial condition that at time equals zero, that's what I have. So how do I get back, if I have a derivative, how do I undo the derivative to get back to the original? Well, I anti-differentiate. So I anti-differentiate with respect, technically I guess that's that, so I don't have to put a DT with each one of them, but I think you get it. So of course I just anti-derive power up, divide by the power up, but notice my plus C, plus C, right? This is my initial condition. What is my initial condition? I see you, get it? I see you, see. But I guess I could kind of, and there was never any K, so I guess I just didn't even have to consider the K. But notice what I've done with my C, right? I've broken my C up. C is I don't know in the X and I don't know in the Y. So I have combined, right? That's I, that's J. So I've combined the X component here and the Y component. And what am I gonna do now? Right, plug in the one. Plug in the one from the initial condition. T equals zero is what I was given and solve for C1. Zero is the initial condition in the J or the Y direction and plug in my the T I'm after and solve for C1. So C1 is one and C2 is zero. So there is R, given R prime with an initial condition of one zero, I got back to R. I was also asked for R of one, so now I'm going to plug one in for T, and that's what I get. All right, again, so what did we do? We did um, last video, we learned about taking derivatives piece by piece and second derivatives piece by piece, and now we've done anti-derivatives piece by piece and an general anti-derivative um, and a um, definite integral and an initial value problem. So let's wrap a few of, now that we've kind of got the mechanics under our belt, Let's wrap this stuff up. Do you remember PVA, position, velocity, and acceleration in single variable calculus? So recall that in three dimensions, if I have right functions operating in the X, the Y, and the Z direction, and we have a space curve, remember the space curve, the path is traced out by that tip as T varies. Right, so I don't know, remember, you know, we've had some cool shapes, right? We've had some, right, some spirals. Maybe that's going up a spiral a staircase or maybe, a, I don't know, maybe we have something like this, which is like something getting sucked up into a, a tornado, like what happens to the particle as it goes up into a, a tornado, right? Kind of like Wizard of Oz-ish, you know, how does Dorothy's house go through that tornado? So if we think of the path as a trajectory of an object moving in space, where the T, as we've been referring to T as time, right, the tip is the position of the object at the tip of that vector is a position at the object at time T. Well, then the velocity of the object is the first derivative of position. Further, the magnitude of that tangent vector would be speed. <gasps> what? Say what? Right? It's just, right? It's the hypotenuse, right? In 3D space. Hello, Pythagoras. 
And further, the acceleration is the second derivative. Well, that's nuts. So it's really, right, we did spend some time in single variable calculus in the first unit doing position to velocity to acceleration. But most applications, and this is what, you know, fascinated Newton and got him started on the whole, right, research and thinking while, by the way, he was sitting at home during a pandemic and quarantined, what the heck is, what if I start with acceleration? And so in single variable calculus, we did that. We were then, as soon as I taught you how to do integration, I said, hey, what if we started acceleration and go backwards? Right, so knowing acceleration, can you get velocity and from velocity get me position? So what if I give you and I or I ask you for the position vector of a particle given acceleration? So you have to recognize that given acceleration means I've given you the second derivative. But I need some more information, don't I? Its initial velocity and position satisfy these conditions at time what? Yeah, time zero. So where do I go from here? I start with acceleration and anti-differentiate, right? Undo acceleration. And I get 2t and 6t squared, don't I? Plus what? Right? So I can think of this as 2ti and 6t squared j. And if, since I do have a k, I can think of a 0k, but I don't have to add that. Plus what? 7i. So what does that turn into? Combining like terms, I get 2t plus 7i and 6t squared j. That's velocity. Now that I have velocity that satisfies the initial condition, how do I get position back? anti-differentiate velocity, and I get t squared i, t squared plus 7t i, right? Plus what? t cubed over 3, but with that 6 there, I get a 2. Plus what? What is my initial condition? Combine. Ta-da! Now, how can I check my work? It's a nice thing with anti-differentiating. What can you always do? I could differentiate and go backwards. If this is r of t, what is r prime of t? And what is 
our double prime of t. Wow. All right, so when we, in our live session, we will do a warm-up that has to do with more of the derivatives, practice taking the derivatives, write the equation of the tangent line, and um, some, and some um, derivative rules. And then we will do a little bit more with these, um, with this application, application problems, PVA and AVP. All right, have a good one, and I will see you soon.